an overview of Cloudera Data Engineering. Data Engineering within CDP focuses on the enrichment of, of data, and it targets two personas, the platform administrator and the data engineering user. As a platform administrator, the, the key capabilities that CD provides is uh, quickly onboarding new tenants. These are new lines of businesses or new workloads. And it's about managing capacity, resources, and actually controlling costs. On the left-hand side are the CD and the environments, you know, across multi multiple clouds, AWS, Azure, that CD has been enabled on. And this gives the users and administrator the access to XDX, the shared data experience that provides the governance and the lineage. Associated with each of these services or, or environments are one or more virtual clusters. These virtual clusters are containerized compute capacity. And what's really different about them is that um, compared to legacy, uh, static clusters, these are auto scaling based on demand. So here you can see this, the, the spark lines here within the heavy ETL workload is showing the demand and, and the usage of capacity going up and down. The other aspect of this is that these virtual clusters are completely isolated, yet they share the underlying infrastructure for higher utilization. It's very simple for the platform administrator to come in and onboard a new tenant or a new workload. They simply give it a name. They set some guardrails along CPU and memory. And with that, they can, they can create it. And this comes up within a matter of minutes. Once uh, the, the virtual cluster had, or that new tenant has been onboarded, the data engineering user it can now go in and, and, and access that virtual cluster, that compute capacity, and start running their jobs and managing it. So let's quickly walk through how, how easy that is. So let's go into this uh, virtual cluster. As a data engineer, one of the first things I want to do is be able to define my job and I start running it. So we have a very simple wizard to do that. This creation wizard, I can give a quick name to my job. So here's my a demo job and I can upload the Spark job that I have written uh, within my favorite ID. Uh, CD supports Python, Scala, and Java. So here I have my PySpark job that I can upload and run. Uh, there's all the typical parameters that a Spark developer expects. There's like runtime arguments, configurations, Python version, since I've uploaded a Python file, advanced options uh, that I can upload configuration files, performance uh, tuning parameters like number of executors, driver memory, and, and uh, cores. And last but not least, I can define a schedule. And uh, what's powerful about the scheduler is that it is backed by Apache Airflow. So as that engineering user, I can come in and, and define, let's say, a set schedule to run every hour at, let's say, at 30 minutes past the hour. I can also define a cron job. I'm going to start an end date. And with that, just within with a few clicks, I've defined my job within CDE. Uh, there's management to actions that I can take. Uh, I can, for example, trigger a manual run of this job. I can edit the schedule. I can I clone it. I can even edit the configuration. Now let's jump into the scheduler. Um, as I mentioned, this is a CDE leverages a managed Apache Airflow service. That means as an administrator, I don't have to worry about the scaling the security of Apache Airflow. It's all managed within CDE. So here, what we've done is we've submitted our job and we automatically generate the code. And this is what makes Airflow really powerful is that it allows uh, data engineers and practitioners to define a, their pipeline as Python code. So here we've automatically generated this Python code configuration file, basically that triggers this job to run. And we don't just allow you to run a simple Spark job, but you can define a fairly complex pipeline. So here uh, is an example Airflow pipeline that we've defined. It has a series of steps that's running uh, Spark jobs, two Spark jobs, followed by a Hive job. And this Hive job runs within CDW. Um, and it triggers a, a, it basically runs a Hive DDL operations within CDW. And the code uh, that the data engineer would create is very simple. It leverages all the out of the box capabilities that comes with, with CDE. Now, once we have uh, are triggering our jobs to run, the data engineer wants to be able to manage and troubleshoot. And so the job runs page gives them uh, all the executions of, of their jobs and their pipelines. So here, for example, let's take a look at our insurance claims job that, that had run. Uh, we bring together in a single pane of glass 
all the data that a data engineer would want. We give them the trends, the configuration, snapshots, a centralized uh, aggregation of all the logs across all the executors. And then we also provide a, you know, a very powerful visual tuning uh, and troubleshooting a UI, which is aggregating metrics along CPU and memory. And it makes it really easy for the data engineer to spot bottlenecks. So here we see visually showing all the stages in the in that particular Spark job. We see it correlated by CPU and memory, and I can spot if there is underutilization or overutilization of resource. So in this case, well, what we notice is we have oversubscribed or basically over allocated resources, which means there's opportunity for me to reduce cost, reduce the utilization um, and increase efficiency. And that's what's really powerful with CDE. I mean, it not only gives the operational uh, aspects to the administrator to onboard new tenants and new workloads very easily and manage costs. It also gives the data engineer uh, full control to automate and troubleshoot their pipelines at scale.